The following video will demonstrate the techniques outlined in your training packet. Please follow along in your packet and take notes as needed. Please bring your packet and your completed pretests to go over with a therapist during your transfer training class. So when preparing to transfer a patient from wheelchair to bed, there are a few things that you can keep in mind about the wheelchair. First of all, the leg rests are removable. So if you turn a leg rest and it's a little bit too close to the bed and you find that it's going to be in your way, before you get the chair that close, you can simply lift up and remove that foot rest. So again, on this side, you're just pushing on the knob in the back, turning the foot rest, and lifting off to remove. You then want to just position your wheelchair close to the bed so that it's either right up against the bed or on an angle, depending on the type of transfer that you're doing. You then want to lock your brakes to ensure patient safety, and you can remove an armrest to make the transfer a little bit easier. To do this, you just pull back on this knob in front here and simply lift the armrest to move it out of the way. Your wheelchair is then set for a patient transfer. I'm now going to teach you how to put a gate belt on a patient. The first thing you want to do is remember that the tag goes on the inside. You then want to put this end through the teeth side first, bring it through the other end, and pull tight. I'll now demonstrate how to put it on a patient. You want to put the gate belt as low as possible. If the patient has tubes or lines or any other medical concerns, in the abdominal region, you can place the gate belt higher up. You want to cinch the gate belt as tight as you can to the point where you can only put two fingers in the gate belt. You can then tuck the rest of the belt into the gate belt to avoid loose ends. When assisting a patient with a halo, you want to be sure to get the patient into a long sitting position before elevating the head of the bed. This will prevent the halo from getting caught in the sheets on the way up and disconnecting from the patient's head. To do so, we'll simply put an arm underneath the patient's shoulders and raise the patient up. You can ask the patient to assist if he or she has the trunk control to do so. Make sure that when you pull the patient up, you're not pulling on the wires of the halo. You can then elevate the bed and if the patient doesn't have the trunk control and you don't have the strength to maintain the patient in this upright position, you can ask for another person's assistance. You will then do, use the same technique when lowering the patient. When working with a patient with hip precautions, it's important to remember that the patient is not, not allowed to bend the hip past 90 degrees, cross the leg past midline, or twist their body. And so when you're performing bed mobility, you want to be sure that the patient is rolling towards their non-operative side and you're using an abduction wedge between the legs or multiple pillows to avoid that leg crossing midline. Amy will now demonstrate. When working with a patient with hip precautions, you want to be sure to raise the bed up before getting the patient out of bed to ensure that the patient will not be bending the hip past 90 degrees. You want to, if at all possible, be sure that the patient is entering and exiting the bed on their operative side. Amy will demonstrate why this is important. As you can see, Amy keeps her leg in an abducted position and she moves her trunk with the rest of her body so that she's not twisting. Then when she's seated at the edge of the bed, her hip is not going beyond 90 degrees.
When positioning a patient with hemiparesis, there's a couple things to keep in mind. You want to make sure that their upper extremity is extended and elevated on top of the pillow. It's also important to make sure that their hand is open. In regards to their leg, you want to make sure that it is extended and in neutral. If the physician's orders call for any daytime or nighttime splints or bracing, please apply these accordingly. When performing bed mobility or transfers with these patients, it's important to keep in mind where their weak arm or leg is positioned. When helping a patient roll in bed, you want to raise the bed so it's at an adequate height and you can practice good body mechanics. From this point, you want the patient to bend the opposite knee. If they're unable to, you can assist. You want them to look towards the direction which they're rolling and with the opposite arm, reach towards the direction which they're rolling. At this point, you may place one hand under the patient's hip and one hand at the shoulder blade to help the patient roll. If they're not able to bend at the knee, an alternate technique would be to have them cross at the ankles and then perform the same technique. It's important to remember any precautions that these patients may have before getting them into any of these positions. When you're working with a patient who's had spinal surgery, they may be put on spinal precautions to include no bending, lifting, or twisting. Therefore, when you're performing bed mobility with this patient, you want to be sure to use a log roll technique to ensure that the patient's body moves as one single unit. To demonstrate that, you're going to have the patient roll towards you, making sure that the trunk and hips move as one single unit. To get the patient into a sitting position, you're going to reach up underneath the patient's shoulder to get on their upper back and wrap your other arm underneath the patient's legs and get the patient into a seated position as one unit. To return the patient back to supine, you'll use the same technique but go in reverse. If the patient's level of dependence puts you or the patient at risk for safety concerns, you can use the head of the bed elevation to assist you. So for this, you will manage the patient's legs and push the button to raise the head of the bed while lowering the patient's legs. This way the patient's body is still moving as one unit. Once the head of the bed is elevated to a position where you feel like you can assist the patient, you'll reach around to that upper back and finish to get the patient into sitting. With these techniques, you want to remember to have the patient assist you as much as possible. When working with a patient with sternal precautions, it's important to remember that they're not allowed to push or pull, open up the chest, or lift anything greater than 10 pounds. So if a patient is unable to stand without using their hands, you can have the patient place their hands next to them and use the hands to assist in standing up without pushing forcefully. You can use momentum to help get the patient up. So on the count of three, rock four, one, two, three. And then the patient will transition to the wheelchair, and without reaching back, the patient will sit down. It's important to remember that when standing up from the wheelchair, the patient shouldn't be reaching their arms back to push up. If the patient is non-weight bearing, it is imperative that they do not bear any weight through the involved lower extremity. There's two ways to transfer these patients. The first way is a modified stand pivot transfer. The patient should perform this transfer with the involved lower extremity extended so that it is off of the ground. Good. 
that can now transfer back to the bed using the same modified stand pivot technique. The second way would be to perform a stand pivot technique using a walker. Becky will now demonstrate the stand pivot technique keeping the lower extremity that's involved off of the ground. If the patient is toe-touch weight-bearing, they are able to use their lower extremity in contact with the ground as a balance point only. They are not to put any pressure or weight through this leg. To perform a transfer, they would use one of the same two techniques, either a modified stand pivot transfer, as Becky will now demonstrate. She is using the left lower extremity only as a balance point, not putting any weight through it. Back to the bed. Or a stand pivot transfer using a walker, again, putting no weight through the involved lower extremity, simply using it as a balance point. When performing transfers with a patient, you want to be sure that you're aware of all precautions as listed in the physician orders. You also want to make sure that you're following the techniques outlined on the current mobility guide. Be sure to maintain open communication with the physical therapist if you have any questions or concerns about the transfer techniques. Allow the patient to do as much as possible when performing a transfer to encourage their independence with all techniques. The following video will demonstrate an ambulatory transfer. Your patient will be sitting on the edge of the bed and you'll have one hand on the back of the gate belt and one hand free to guard their upper body in case of loss of balance. You're going to have your patient lean forward to stand up and then they'll ambulate to their chair. The patient can then turn around and reach back for their chair before sitting. I'll be demonstrating a contact guard stand pivot transfer. One hand will be on the back of the gate belt and the other hand will be free to guard the patient's upper body in case of loss of balance. You'll have your patient lean forward to stand up, turn and pivot towards the wheelchair, and reach back for the armrest before sitting down. In the event that some physical lifting assist is needed, you can position yourself in front of the patient with your hands on the side or the back of the gate belt. You can have your patient lean forward and push off of their chair to stand up, and then they'll pivot towards the mat. And then they can reach back for the mat before sitting. We'll be demonstrating a modified stand pivot transfer with supervision. The patient has been positioned with their hips angled towards the wheelchair to decrease the distance that has to be covered during the transfer. The armrest of the wheelchair has also been removed so that the patient doesn't have to clear it during the transfer. You'll have your patient reach out to the seat of the wheelchair or to the armrest depending on what they can reach. Their head will need to be angled towards you so that their hips will go towards the chair.
In the event that your patient needs more lifting assist, you can position yourself in front of the patient with both hands on the gait belt. Your patient's head will need to come over the shoulder opposite to the transfer surface, so you'll want to position yourself to make sure that you don't prevent them from doing so. Have the patient stand and pivot to the transfer surface. We'll be demonstrating setup for a slide board transfer. The wheelchair has been positioned at a 30 degree angle to the transfer surface to avoid transferring over the wheel. The armrest has also been removed to make the transfer easier. You'll position the sliding board under the patient by having them lean to the opposite side if they're able. You can use the patient's pant leg to assist with positioning the slide board and to avoid catching the fabric. You'll then have the patient lean back and you want to make sure that you have about half of the sliding board under the patient and half positioned onto the wheelchair with it directed towards the center of the wheelchair. We'll now demonstrate a slide board transfer with supervision. The slide board has already been positioned under the patient. You'll want to cue the patient to lean forward and away from the transfer surface to make the transfer easier. This will also prevent the patient from sliding off the mat, which will happen if the patient leans back. You'll want to make sure that the patient keeps their hand flat on the slide board during the transfer to prevent their hand from getting trapped. We'll now demonstrate the slide board transfer. In the event that your patient needs more physical assist, you can position yourself in front of the patient to assist with the transfer. All previous techniques discussed for the slide board transfer still apply. You'll want to cue the patient to lean their head to your opposite shoulder, and you'll want to position yourself to allow them to do so. One hand can be on the slide board to prevent it from moving, and the opposite hand can be on the patient's hip to provide physical assist. We'll now demonstrate the transfer. In the event that the patient's hips have slid forward in the chair, you can assist them in scooting back by standing in front of the patient and blocking their knees to keep them from sliding further out of the chair. You'll want to cue the patient to lean forward towards you, and you can then grab the gait belt and have them push through their arms and legs to assist with scooting back. In the case that the patient is unable to scoot back in this fashion, you can ask for a second person to come and assist from behind to pull the gait belt backwards to assist with the hips moving to the back of the chair.